Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the New Muslim Workshop. My name is Mahmoud. In today's episode, I'm going to be combining two of my series, Reddit Asks and Revert Reality Check, into something like Reddit Revert Reality Check. That took me forever to come up with. No, it didn't. It was a minute. It took me a minute. Anyway, subject matter is cultural appropriation and reverts. Let's talk about it. Welcome to the new Muslim workshop. Welcome back. So, a year ago, I came across a post in Reddit where a brother of mine, a revert, had posted a question where they were asking if wearing the Islamic thobe, which is what I'm wearing right now, was considered cultural appropriation since he was a white Muslim. I was very intrigued by that. I, I never really thought about something like that, that, that somebody would even consider that once they became Muslim, that they weren't part of Islamic culture. But then I kind of thought, well, okay, in my culture, this is not a thing, but in their culture, it's a thing. And as I was doing research, about this, sort of, sort of to flesh out this, this episode, I came to a realization that almost, I don't know, 40 or 50% of posts about cultural appropriation of Islamic culture came from non-Muslims. And the majority of them were women that were asking if it was okay for them to wear the Islamic abaya. It's a very modest article of clothing. And so for non-Muslim women to come and say, look, I'd like something modest and I found Islamic wear. Can I wear it? Is it considered, would it be considered, you know, like a faux pas? Now, thankfully and universally, everybody was like, no, no, by all means, please, please cover yourself. We would appreciate it if you actually went ahead and wore something modest. Okay, on the flip side, and this, this is something that really confused me, it was the amount of women that asked if they could wear the hijab as non-Muslims. Think about that. Non-Muslim, Christian, atheist women that were asking to wear the hijab. Not being forced, but voluntarily wanting to cover themselves, cover their hair, and asking if it was a faux pas, if it was something that, you know, we would consider um, offensive as a cultural appropriation tactic or whatever. So, it's, it's starting to rain. So the question started that, hey, you know what? There is a market for modesty that the people of the world are not being catered to. The women of the world are not being catered to modest clothing. This was something that we noticed, my, my wife and I, when we first came to Australia, when we were buying clothes for, at the time, my young children. Because, you know, the boys didn't have any problems finding modest clothing, but the girls, and we're talking about, seven, 10, 11 year olds, we couldn't find any clothing for them that was in any way modest. It had to be compromised. And so if I wanted to give my daughter or, or you know, my children were young, they, they had still not hit puberty. And so they, the, my daughters could walk around without hijab. It wasn't compulsory for them to wear hijab. And so when we were looking for clothing for them, we couldn't find anything modest. And this drove me nuts. We, we, if we wanted to buy any clothing, we had to go to specialty stores. And, you know, the clothing was very expensive. So anyway, going back to the idea of cultural appropriation. For my brothers and sisters of the Muslim community, please be aware that once you become Muslim, that your culture is Islam. It is your 
superseding culture, meaning that once you become Muslim, that does not negate the fact that you are Spanish, or you are Portuguese, or you are German. However, your Islamic culture has precedence over your German culture, or your Dutch culture, or your whatever it may be, Hungarian culture. So if in your Hungarian culture, drinking alcohol is normal while you're sitting eating dinner, then the culture of Islam supersedes it and cancels it out. If, for example, like in South Korea, their, I guess, main diet, their, their like 85% of the meat that they consume in South Korea is pork, then obviously the culture of being South Korean is superseded by the culture of being Muslim. So let's take a step back from that. As a new Muslim, whether you're white, whether you are Asian, and Asian in both, whether you're Southeast Asian or you're Far East Asian, is it okay for you to wear Islamic garb? Absolutely. And the reason why is because you are following the Sunnah the tradition of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, is it okay for you to follow the Sunnah of the Prophet sallam and wear, for example, the kafiya, or the hatta, or uh, the agal, or the taiya, or the jubba, or the izar? All of these things, I will list them and I will show them on the screen so that you are aware of what they look like. Welcome to the video within a video. In this section, we are going to talk about the different articles of clothing that the Prophet ﷺ used to wear. And they are therefore part of Islamic culture. And that means that you in turn can wear it without anybody bothering you. Because they shouldn't, because you're Muslim. And therefore, you are entitled to wear whatever the Prophet ﷺ used to wear. We will begin with the head dress that the Prophet ﷺ used to wear. And that is, in English, a turban. In Arabic, uh, amama. And the amama is made up of two parts, a very long piece of cloth and a hat. We also call that a kufi hat and it comes in so many different variants. I will try to present as many different variants of the kufi hat as I can. So the Prophet ﷺ used to wear the kufi hat and used to wrap his head in a specific way. And he would either wear the wrappings, the turban alone, or... He would wear the hat alone, or he would wear them both together. And when the Sahaba were describing how he looked when he entered Mecca for the conquest of Mecca, he was wearing a black turban, which is cool, and he had the two ends coming down between his shoulder blades. Additionally, there are many brothers who wear the amama, the wrapping, the, the turban, who are scholars. So... You will find that the scholars in Egypt, the scholars in Lebanon, the scholars in Palestine, and in Syria, they wear the turban in a specific way. Not necessarily in the way that the Prophet used to wear it, but they have their own sort of cultural way of wearing it, and it is sort of synonymous with them. We move on to the kufi hat, just by itself, because the kufi hat is uh, very, very particular to Muslims, much like the hats of the Jews, those little caps that cover their head. They call them yarmukul, and they call them kippahs, and they call them all kinds of, I guess they have multiple names for them. But for Muslims, we wear something called a kufi hat, and it comes in many variants. Some of them are cylindrical. It's like a cylinder that is cut off. And some of them are very particular. They look like they have been embroidered, like somebody crocheted them. And in many cases, I guess they were crocheted because they have different patterns. I remember I had one on when I went to Umrah. And obviously in Umrah, you kind of shave your head. And I got a sunburn and I had the outline of the hat, the crochet outline of the hat on my bald head. It was, it was glorious. Next, we have the most favored article of clothing to the Prophet وسلم, which was the thawb or the qamis. And the thawb comes in many, many variants because there's the long sleeve variant 
There's a short sleeve variant. There are variants from North Africa, variants from the Gulf area, which is obviously Kuwait, Bahrain, Qatar, Oman, etc. They have their own variant. And there is a variant from Palestine and Jordan and Lebanon, etc. In Egypt, they call it the Galabiya. In uh, Middle East, they call it Dishdasha. In North Africa, they have a variant called the Jilaba. And the Jilaba is kind of cool because it has a hoodie attached to it. And it is very reminiscent of what the Jawas wear in Star Wars. I believe that uh, George Lucas actually took inspiration for the way the Jawas are dressed from the Jilaba. The Jilaba is worn in Libya, in Algeria, and in Morocco, but I believe it originated in Morocco. I'm sure somebody is going to correct me in the comments. That's just all I know about it. It's kind of cool. I wish I had one. I'm going to try to find a really cool one that I found. I'll place it and you guys can drool over it just like I will. After the thawb, over it, actually the overgarment for that is the jubba. And the jubba is kind of like the cool outer garment that Neo wore in the Matrix. It's kind of very cool. And it is an A-line garment that is very well known it's kind of associated with the Azharis who wear the the jubba over their thawb. So they would wear a thawb and a jubba on top of it, and that is considered the Azhari uniform, and it's very cool. I think it's very cool. The Prophet was known to travel wearing the jubba. So he'd have the thawb underneath, he would have the jubba on top, and and they would be long sleeve, and he would ride. The next article of clothing is also an outer garment, and it is called the burda. And the burda is also an outer garment. It's usually a bit thicker, and he would, he would actually wear it and sleep in it. I believe the burda in the Middle East is, for men, called the abaya. And the abaya, because um, I lived in, in Kuwait for a few years, this is what the men wear on top of their thawb. The women have their own abaya, it's a female abaya, and it's a, it's, it has the same name, but it's a different article of clothing, more flowing, more modest, completely covers the woman from top to bottom, and it's specific to women. After that, obviously, there's something specific to women. There's the female abaya, which we've already spoken about in the beginning of the video, and I've shown a few variants of. But there is additionally something called the jilbab. So the jilbab is, again, a covering for women that it kind of includes the hijab. So it, it's a all in one piece. It includes the hijab and covers the body as well. After that comes the izar. And the izar, I don't know if you've seen the short that I recorded previously where I call it the Islamic kilt. But yeah, the, the izar is also called the sarong in Southeast Asia. It includes uh, Indonesia and Malaysia and Pakistan and India. All of these countries have uh, the sarong and they wear it. However, in the Middle East, there is a variant that the Prophet ﷺ used to wear and it's called the izar and it, it wraps around uh, the waist and covers the bottom. The Prophet also وسلم, used to wear something called a sirwal. And the sirwal is basically pants. They're, they're kind of like trousers, but they they don't have zippers. It's just basically a pair of trousers that would be worn underneath your thawb. They are still worn until today by the majority of the Middle Eastern countries and as well as in Egypt and in Palestine and Lebanon and Syria. However, in Lebanon and Syria... And in Iraq, actually, they are kind of baggy. They're more of a cultural thing where they're really baggy on top and then they kind of taper towards the bottom, towards the ankle. And finally, the final article of clothing is the Prophet Aisatwasalam's leather socks, which are called the khuf. Prophet Aisatwasalam used to wear the khuf all the time. And it's a very difficult article of clothing to, for you to find outside of the Middle East. Many of the Sahaba used to wear them, and so did the Prophet ﷺ. And we return to our usual programming after this. But ultimately speaking, 
your culture, once you become Muslim, is Islam. And once you come to Friday prayers and you decide to wear your Islamic thawb or your hatta or your kifiyah, by all means, nobody is going to say that this is you culturally appropriating somebody else's culture because your culture, your superseding culture, is Islam. And the same goes to our sisters in Islam. And so for one of uh, our revert sisters who posted on Reddit that she was worried that wearing the hijab, she wanted to wear the hijab after she became Muslim, she wanted to wear the hijab and she was worried that this would be considered cultural appropriation. The majority of the people who left comments, alhamdulillah, answered correctly and said, absolutely, you can absolutely wear the hijab. This is not cultural appropriation because you are from the nation of Islam. Again, not, not Farah Khan's nation of Islam, but the ummah of Islam. So what does that mean? It means that anyone who becomes Muslim is welcome to wear anything from the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. In Islam, it is not considered cultural uh, appropriation if you are wearing something that is from the tradition of the Prophet ﷺ or the tradition of the wives of the Prophet, the mothers of the believers. Now, in my case, me wearing the kifiyah as a Palestinian, this is my culture. This is, these are my tribal etchings. When I wear the kifiyah, I'm representing my people. As such, this is something organic for me. Is it okay for somebody who is not Palestinian to wear the kifiyah? In this day and age, there's no issues at all because if anything, it shows solidarity with my brothers and sisters from my country. There's no issues there again. If you wish to wear the kifiyah or, or the kufiyah, then wearing it is not considered cultural appropriation, especially when we are talking about the idea that you are doing it in solidarity with your brothers and sisters from Palestine. And to bring focus on our brothers and sisters in Gaza and what they are going through and, and the genocide that is happening there. This can be contrasted with how the Zionists are stealing the Palestinian culture and the Arab culture for that matter. As people who don't have a culture, the Zionists have to not only steal land, but they have to go and steal things like hummus, which even in its name is an Arab word. However, the Zionists will come and say that this is Israeli hummus. Obviously, this is not. And the same with falafel. Uh, when the Israelis say, well, this is Israeli falafel. There's no such thing as Israeli falafel. This is, there's Israelis who have stolen a food stuff from the Palestinians and the Arabs in the region and have decided, I, I, you know, I, I guess eventually they're going to come in and say, oh, this is Israeli ma'lubi. This is Israeli kibbani. This is Israeli mansaf. This is, is Mshan Allah. Stop that. If, if you want to say anything about that is cultural appropriation, that is cultural theft, not appropriation, but theft. These are people that not only steal land, they murder people and they are fasad fil ard. Allahumma alayka bis sahayanati wa man walahum. Allahumma hsihim adada wa qtulhum badada wa la tuqadir minhum ahada. Allahumma ameen. So to answer your question, no, absolutely not. It's not cultural appropriation for a Muslim to wear Islamic garb, especially the ones that the Prophet ﷺ was known to wear. And that's it. Very, very kind of uh, quick uh, video and that, inshallah, is beneficial to you. And um, please subscribe and share and do all that uh, lovely nonsense. And inshallah, we'll see you in the next video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.